and welcome back to our epic Fraser Island adventure. Today, we're heading across the island and working our way up to the pristine beaches of Sandy Cape. If you haven't seen part one, go check it out. I'm sure it'll be floating around on the screen somewhere here for you to click. For the legends who have already seen part one, let's get into today. day two on Fraser Island so we're still in Barrel Creek and last night we had a pretty crazy thunderstorm well it wasn't that crazy actually but when you're in a swag you feel and hear everything so the wind was billowing in from the side which is where Dunk was sleeping and I think that meant he had to roll over to me quite a bit to get away from like the weather swag was moving in I swept, I slept through most of it as I normally do which is not good um, so he's a bit more tired than I am this morning but you can't really complain when you wake up in the morning and you're greeted with this view. It's never going to get old. So today we're heading over to the east side. It's going to take quite a long drive, I think. So we've gotten up as early as we can. <laughs> Bearing in mind that Doug didn't sleep too well. We're going to pack up the swag, which takes no time at all, and head south across and back north. Good morning. Oh, morning. Why is the percolator? Well, I haven't used the percolator this morning, but I've just realised that this is not coffee grounds necessary for percolating. It's actually instant coffee, so it just looks a lot like coffee grounds. But if you read the instructions on the back, which we definitely didn't do in the coffee store, <laughs> it uh, yeah, it just says to boil the water and mix it in. Um, so yeah, I'm drinking some out of the percolator. It's, it's interesting. It's definitely not nice. <laughs> I'm going to try it the way it says to make it, which looks a little bit like making black soup. Mm. Uh, and yeah, see what sort of coffee we get out of it. Probably drink it more for the caffeine now than anything else. So you know it's getting drunk. <laughs> After our kind of sludgy coffees, it was time to cruise. As Sophie said, today we'd be heading back down the beach to a Winya Creek, then through the middle of the island to the eastern beaches, making our way all the way up to the tip of Sandy Cape. The hill out of Awinya Creek gave us our first taste of the island's infamous sandy tracks. Now I know what you're going to say, that hill looks easy, yeah yeah yeah, the video never does it justice. Or at least that's what I'd tell myself anyway. Not going to lie, we did have to take a couple of run ups of this one because the hill had been hammered by a few rigs before we got there, leaving deep bog holes for us to fall into. Anyways, after a few run ups and plenty of gas, we blitzed up the track and were on our way. Coming across the inland track, I think we've pretty much got across the island now. It was um, a bit gnarly there getting out of the first bit, going up the hills, it's pretty soft sand, had to reverse back and up a couple of, couple of sections. But then you head through the middle mm -hmm. and it's all sort of, turns into like jungle and like deep really sand cool. tracks. But now we can see the sand dunes on the other side, so I think we've gotten across. Hmm. Nearly anyway, and we should pop out, I think, at Happy Valley, and then we're going to head north up the beach to Orchard Beach, fill it with fuel, and then keep going even further north to, what's that section called, Nala Rocks? Nala Rocks. Gnarly rocks. Yeah, nah. The correct pronunciation is Ningala rocks, which is important to get right. Unless, like us, you want to get super strange looks from locals when you ask for directions. I don't know if they thought we were just stupid or genuinely didn't know what we were asking. I guess we'll never know. When you look at the map, they say experienced four wheel drivers only. Very experienced. A very experienced four wheel drivers only. And that, I mean, that's a hard one to answer. Are we very experienced? Definitely not. Do we have the right kit? Yes. So I don't know, like uh, hopefully very experienced is just to sort of, you know, rightly so, worn off, you know, your real tourists doing it in the Hyundai's 
And before everyone says, what's wrong with a Hyundai? There's nothing wrong with Hyundai's, it was just the first car that came to mind. But this is the sort of thing I meant. Get the picture? Or whatever, and we'll be sweet, but uh, I'm not being overconfident on it, because I assume when someone says it's pretty, pretty extreme that it will be, so yeah. we'll see. Almost all the paths across the island are single tracks, so you will find yourself having to pull over a lot to let other vehicles pass. Now, I'm not sure about the etiquette here, but a general rule of thumb is to pull over whenever you have the space to do so, and especially if there's multiple vehicles coming the other way. Don't, under any circumstances, forget to wave at the other drivers as they go past. The wave, as we're finding out, is a non-negotiable part of full driving etiquette. Yeah, that's a joke, but honestly, if you've ever waved at someone and they don't wave back, you'll know why I put that in there. across the island, hot tip for you, buy a map or just follow the uh, signposts because Google or any other type of map will take you absolutely the wrong way and often doesn't know where there's a road where there is a road or thinks you can go down a road which is a management or closed road so just forget about it. Just get a map, follow the street signs but we've got to cross anyway so we're on the other side back on the beach and heading up to Nala Rocks, or Gnarly Rocks. Yep, still Ningala Rocks, champ. All right, a man just frantically waved his hands at us. So there is a plane approaching, a seaplane. So okay. they obviously want us to see some national sign, which most places. How nuts is that? <laughs> so, there was cones out to say, look out for planes. And we looked out and it was We safe. looked out and we were going to go on the right hand side, but, uh, but apparently uh, we got flagged down by uh, well, one of the pilots of another plane saying uh, that we were uh, on the runway, I guess. So <laughs> the hazards you're looking out for are often not the ones that you should be. Anyway. That's absolutely nuts. Twenty nine liters, seventy one bucks. It's a seller's market, isn't it? It's a seller's market. All right, so we just stopped in at Orchard Beach, filled up with fuel. We've only used half a tank, but we don't want to get to the top of the island and then it needs some more, because that is the last petrol station or fuel station at this far north. We'll Except for it being bloody expensive, mm. it's always a good idea to have more fuel than you need, um, but they don't miss you. Although at least that petrol station wasn't more expensive than the one as soon as you get off the ferry. At least it doesn't get more and more expensive the further and further you get away from the ferry. I thought it might. <laughs> now, there are a few ways you can tackle Ningala rocks. The first is a track hugging the cliff, which is cut through the rocks and often full of dark muddy water leading into a soft sandy hill that is a popular spot for people looking to get bogged and get some practice in with their recovery gear. The second is along the beach, which depending on the time and tide can be inaccessible and kind of was when this legend hit his line. Oof. <laughs> it might just be me, but when I see this, I imagine his missus sitting in the passenger seat, shouting at him the entire way across as he hits these deep beach channels. The third is kind of a mixture of the two, where you can start on the beach or rocks and then make your way between the two, cutting out that soft sandy hill and culminating in this cool little rock drop off. We ended up opting for the first option, but not before we used the time-tested method of waiting for someone else to go through first before we committed.
was that? Did it look pretty cool going through? Yeah, it did. <laughs> it's almost like there's sheer cliffs on either side of you as you go That's down. That's probably the only dodgy bit is like the fact that when you're bouncing up and down, you're like, hopefully I don't go too far one way and hit the side. But I think we went through pretty easily, I guess. Had the drone up, so it'll show us how close we were to anything. But yeah, so far so good. That was, you know, I didn't want to slow down past it. So I actually left Sophie. I've got video of Soph <laughs> running along the track. Cause I just like, I can't stop in this soft sand. So just kept going. And then when I was waiting for Soph, I had the drone up and I watched someone actually do it from the beach side, which was pretty interesting. Cause they're going boom and bombing through like inlets and stuff. And I don't know if I'd want to do that way. But anyway, we're through, <laughs> on with the journey. That was Yay, fun. Well done. So I passed the Gala Rocks now, and I must admit, it, it, I don't know if it gets worse than that, but it was pretty easy if you got the right kit. We got there, and we did have a car reverse yeah. and turn around, and it was a group that was actually, we passed on the way up, and we sort of like going back and forth on them, and they went past us and we stopped at the general store for fuel, and they sort of said to us, nah, not gonna try it. Don't, don't feel game, don't have my car through there. So I was a little bit like, oh great, okay. Cause when we spoke to them, they seemed pretty bloody confident. And uh, yeah, easy. I mean, I can understand why they wouldn't want to take their car through, but um, they didn't have a snorkel or anything. Maybe they're worried about it getting flooded, but it, it wasn't that deep. Yeah, they kind of didn't think that car was lifted, was it? Or maybe not as lifted as ours. It wasn't, li it wasn't lifted. Yeah, it wasn't lifted, had road, like roadie tires on it. Didn't have a snorkel. So you can imagine, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to take just a normal car through there if I wanted it to survive for <laughs> a good couple of years past that point. Yeah. So Soph's the navigator in all this, and every single time we get to an intersection, she goes, which way are you going? And I'm like, you've got the map. But she goes, the map doesn't help. So I don't know, I don't know how we're navigating at the moment because it seems- just heading north. Which, just heading up the beach at the moment. The campground is right on the top of the island. So unless there's no more island, we're heading in the right direction is my logic. You know, the map is actually really useful when you're going on certain roads, but then when you're just navigating the beach, it obviously doesn't tell you how far up the beach you've gone. There's no like checkpoints or anything. So as long as we head north, I think we'll be sweet. Is it all on the beach though, or is it an inland road? Cause that's what I'm not sure about. Well, so we might go along this beach for a long time before we- uh... The map doesn't show any roads. But what does it say here? So that's all green, is that where we are? Yep. So all up there is green. What does green mean on the, the key? Green means camping area. Camping area. Well, you assume if it's camping area, you can yeah. drive on it. So maybe we're on this beach. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Guess who was in charge of sticking that up? <laughs> Definitely Sophie. <laughs> Guess what happened to it? Definitely fell off. That's what I'm dealing with here. This is my co-pilot. Bloody doesn't know how to read a map. Doesn't stick the camera on properly. And, can drink a beer. And keep stopping to have bloody beers. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't, know, what, don't know what I'm meant to do with you, to be honest. Upgrade. You're on holiday. I need a, I need a rally. Look, you look the part. Look at this. Got the map out on a lap. Looks like she's reading it. In reality, no. Nah, probably upside down, to be honest with you. It's probably not even the right way around. Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> you can tell me. I think Duncan actually just filmed all that upside down because we had the camera obviously on the dash facing a certain way and he's picked it up and I've just realized all the numbers on the front are back to front. It's a good thing I do the editing and know how to rotate the video, isn't it so? <laughs> I got her. <laughs> On the drive up to Sandy Cape, it's clear to see how the island got its traditional name, Gadi, meaning paradise, which is derived from the Buchala people's dreamtime creation story. Really hope I pronounced that correctly. Apologies if I didn't. i
such a waste, such a waste, such a waste. Looking on the city lights, flashing bright in my eyes. Look up to the sky and die. Alright, I'm just left camp. About 500 meters drive at the beach to. 500 meters? You reckon more? <laughs> yeah. Good couple of K up the beach. Heading to Sandy Cape Lighthouse, yep. which is apparently a 1.2 k walk up a boardwalk, and they say shoes are advised, advised. or recommended. But we're breaking that rule, so I think we'll be, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see if it gets gnarly or not. Anyway, should be there in a sec. Check it out. I'm going all the way up. First part of that boardwalk was a little bit sore on your feet because you had to make sure you're sort of stepping from one plank to another. Otherwise, yeah, it was a bit. You fall down the cracks. Well, you fall. Yeah, not that they were big, but no. just enough to be uncomfortable on your feet. But now, as we climb higher, it's this beautiful sandy track. So too easy. It's quite a nice walk because you, staying on the uh, the outside of the island next to the beach, you kind of forget a little bit about the interior of the island. So climbing up here almost feels a little bit like you're climbing up, you know, like one of those sort of mountains in um, Sicily or yeah. Malta and places we've been before. Yeah, where it's quite dry. Real dry. And you can just see water on the horizon everywhere. How cool is this lighthouse? So it was built in 1870. And what amazes me is that that walk that we just walked up, they had to haul 12,000, or no, 1,200 tons of steel up there with horse and cart. That's insane. That would have required so much hard work. Good on them. It's a really cool lighthouse. And also what it says over here is how they actually painted it, which is really cool. So there's a guy who made a, what looks like a sort of swing and winched it to his car and then essentially drove the car back and forward to get up and down the lighthouse. Charlie Ranger rigged a rope from the bison's chair through a pulley to the Jeep, driving back and forth, raised and lowered the chair so the light keeper could paint the, paint the whole of this. So who would have thought it got to the top and it was actually the top that I ended up hurting my foot? <laughs> Stumped it on this little rock here. It serves me right for not listening to the sign. <laughs> anyway. Ah, uh, thanks Soph. I really appreciate you pointing that out for me again. On our way back from the lighthouse, we spotted some absolutely massive sand dunes that were towering over the beach. And, as Sophie puts it, we are suckers for some sand dunes. So up we climbed. I'm not sorry cause that was intentional. Uh-huh. I meant every word that I said. Yeah. You get angry with me cause I'm flexible Uh-huh End of how I like things in the bed Oh, oh, no My heart's like an ocean It's deep and it's open The one thing I promise I always be honest Eternal devotion It's been six days now since we saw water and things are getting pretty desperate. As you can see in front of me, sand as far as the eye can see. I don't know. Oh, wait, it's all water. <laughs> Come on. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's about as much energy. <laughs> what a spot. Growing up down south, sand dunes were a lot less common than this. Feels like up in Queensland. Yeah. 
There's sand dunes bloody everywhere. Yeah, particularly on Fraser Island, the sand blows all the way along definitely the east coast. Oh, fun fact, Fraser Island is the largest sand island in the world. In the world? In the world. Wow. Well, that's what the map says and Google, which I'm trusting. And is this the largest sand dune on Fraser Island? <sighs> I don't know. Oh, well. There's a lot of them. We can pretend it is. The largest sand dune in the world. <laughs> definitely not. The it's definitely not the largest one. I promise I always be honest. It cannot be bullshit. If we keep things open. If you love all of me. Then you let me be free. If you love me. Then you let me be free. Could anyone believe they can own another? Isn't that a bit naive to think you want each other? How could anyone believe they can own another? Isn't that a bit naive to think you want each other? Sempre você toma onda do mar. Ready? Sempre você. Go. I'm saying it right, I'm not sure. So, I think we are gonna set up our swag here. It looks like a pretty good spot, I reckon. Chairs here, cook off the back, and then maybe go for a swim, maybe put the kayaks in. We've got this afternoon here, we've got all day tomorrow, and then we leave the next day to head back down the beach and check out all the choicey things. So, yeah, let's put the swag up. Morning where we were at Barrel Creek, which is on the west. So we've had a bit of a dive. We've gone from Barrel Creek. We've actually had to come down and slightly south. It's the only road through, or the only road that we can find anyway. We've come through and we've popped out just around Cathedral Beach, and then we've headed all the way up the beach, which is a really nice drive, up to Orchard Beach. So just before Orchard Beach, you've got toilets, because obviously there's not toilets everywhere on the island. So consider that before you stay west or north. Check out the toilets. Picked up some fuel in Orchard Beach, and then we headed through Nagala Rocks. So all of this, we left here at 8.30 this morning, we got to Nagala Rocks for low tide at 11.50. So that gives you a bit of an understanding of how long it takes, and that's probably best case scenario, because we didn't really get stuck behind anyone, we didn't get bogged, so it could take a bit longer, so just bear that in mind. And then we carried on all the way at the beach, again, nice drive, and we've now got to Kari Camping Area, which is right at the top, We've got pure ocean out there. It's pretty remote, there's not too many people around. And we're now here at 12.50. So again, probably about a four hour drive all the way with a 20 minute stop for fuel and groceries. Here's something I whipped up, whipped up earlier. Now nah, I'm taking the piss. <laughs> this Sophie meal prepped all this. Um, I've got no idea what it even is. Looks like you got some beans, some mints, carrots. Looks pretty healthy. All I have to do is heat it back up again, but... Uh... And throw some cheese and hummus on top. Throw some cheese and hummus on top. They're the two things that I uh, can do. Anyway, this is ready, so let's, let's have some lunch. Get a hummus on top. You have it here, folks. Sophie and I eat the exact same size of food. Ah, oh, what a spot. Sitting here in the living room. You think of it as the balcony. Sitting here watching these guys fish, contemplating life, working out whether or not we take our kayaks out and drop our lines in. 
obviously take a couple of beers and see, you know, it's not fishing, it's the, the drinking beers and sitting out in the water, to be honest with you. But yeah, enjoying this lovely lunch, pretty good. We are going to take our two kayaks and the bait we've got and go fishing right up there. You've already put the drone up and you've seen something large in the water. Yeah, so I flew the drone over before and it didn't look like a shark. It didn't move quite like a shark would. It looked like a big fish, a very big fish. So like a very, very big tuna or something like that. Um, definitely nothing we could catch with our little rod and reel combo. Maybe if I had the spear gun and was game to go out there, but I'm not game to swim off the beach at Fraser. And um, that's just a little bridge too far for me. Gonna head off the beach, cruise along, hopefully get a few bites. And there's a big sandbar at the end here. So if we hit that, we can kind of stop and I might come pick us up in the car. But yeah, one of the main important things to take when you're going out to sea uh, is in this little compartment here, the Great Northerns. Or any beer will do. Any beer. It can be Great Northerns, it can be Tui's, it can be uh, Foster's for all you English people. Fish down there, start to fall in the water a couple of times. Losing a beer, losing all my hooks, losing all my sinkers. I am back in the water. Doing pretty good. A little flatty here. Look at that. That's amazing. Right, had an awesome afternoon at the lighthouse, the dunes. Doug's been out for a kayak. And now he's going to finish the afternoon off by cooking. Check this out. Howdy. What are you cooking? <laughs> <laughs> well, look. I'm gonna try, and this may not turn out anything like what I'm expecting it to turn out. I'm gonna try, and excuse me, if we don't have a chopping board. That's one of the one things we forgot, but the Esky lid seems to do the job. I'm gonna try and make pizzas. Before you say, you got a frying pan, how the hell are you gonna make pizzas? Um, what I'm gonna do is cook all the food up. Put a flatbread in with lots of butter, turn it upside down, turn it over some more of a calzone, and then uh, a bit of cheese, melt it, almost like a you know, melted ham and cheese wrap sort of thing. Ooh. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. It may just me after a few beers thinking it's a great idea, but i um, done it once when I was camping and it seemed to work out pretty well. So let's see. Perfect for two. That does look really cool. It looks like an enchilada pizza. Chicken, chorizo, mushroom, tomato, and it's a like lot a of cheese. Life, it? It's like the perfect food from a night out. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's something you'd make when you're drunk. Fried pizza. If 
if you wanna Late nights on the stars if you wanna We could just kiss if you wanna Hey, tell me what you gonna do It's like the story of my life Best friend, but we rocking all the same things Say you need me, but you really trying to change lanes Well, I don't even care In my life, I don't battle with no fear Fighting dragons always been a real one Hate you say you're showing love, you a real chameleon Once again, thank you for watching. Join us in part three for more Fraser Island adventures. And believe me when I say, the best is yet to come. At the risk of sounding like a YouTuber, like, sub, share, notify, all that jazz. Share with a friend or even a grandparent. Really? Anyone. <laughs> Tell me what you wanna do